Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel, and thanks for logging on. Today, we're discussing the Rolex Oyster Perpetual GMT Master II, reference 16760. You can see and you can own this Coke bezel first generation GMT Master II on our website. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you enjoy these videos, and please click on the card in the upper right-hand corner of the screen at any time during this video to see our full sales listing for this watch with additional accessories included in the sale, high-resolution images for your desktop, and naturally complete pricing details for this GMT Master II Generation 1. Now from its debut in the early to mid 1950s, roughly late 1954 to 1983, the GMT Master, a pilot's watch with a bi-directional rotating bezel, could temporarily help the pilot to gauge two time zones by offsetting the 24-hour bezel from the GMT time set on the 24-hour hand and factoring in the local GMT offset of whatever airport he was flying to. The problem was you could not actually set the 24-hour hand to be anything but an AM-PM indicator for the local 12-hour hand. In 1983, with this model, that changed. In terms of case size, this watch is definitely more in a vintage mode than contemporary Rolex super case. 40 millimeters across the round of the case, not including the crown or crown guards. The watch is also reasonably slim, despite its nickname, fat lady. I measure it out at about 12.4 millimeters thick, which means for practical purposes, it sits like any other five-digit reference GMT or GMT Master II on the wrist. Now, from lug to lug, the watch is quite compact, 47.5 millimeters. This is a great option for wrists as small as 13 centimeters in circumference. Now, I will say, though this watch was constructed during the late 1980s, likely approximately 1987 based on the serial number, the bracelet is considerably newer. Now, it's also a Submariner spec 93150 model, which means that it features an interesting flip-lock dive extension. Now, personally, between a worn-out vintage bracelet and a relatively recent stamped Submariner bracelet with the diving clasp, unless you're talking about something like an original Jubilee, that would have shipped with the watch and been codified on the Rolex USA warranty card, I would rather have the utility of the modern bracelet. It feels more secure and solid, and the flip lock is surprisingly useful for those who live in cold climes and wish to wear the watch over a thick winter sweater or coat. But it is the case, the bezel, the crystal, and the movement that set this generation 16760 apart from everything that came before. There were a lot of firsts. The first use of the Coke bezel. The model was only ever made with the black and the red 24-hour bezel. The first use of the white gold gloss dial. That was the first time it was used on the GMT Master or GMT Master II family. This model right here. First use of a sapphire crystal. The first GMT Master II. This watch was the first with the sapphire crystal. And I should also mention, because it's what's inside that truly counts. This was the first independent dual time Rolex GMT Master. Now, because you still have that 24 hour bi directional bezel, you can actually still use it for its original purpose. But rather than temporarily reading two time zones, you can temporarily read three. And of course, when you withdraw the crown to its intermediate, of course, you can see those awesome vintage style open nines and sixes. But let me show you how this watch does its thing. I don't have the nails I used to have, guys, I apologize. You can individually adjust the hour hands. Adjust everything in sync to set the 24 hour and then set your local hour hand. And of course the date is driven by the local hour hand. Now this is a watch that represents modern usability on the wrist with borderline vintage status and undoubted collectability. I will say, all things considered though, this one is a solid example that I would rate as about 7.5 out of 10. There's a few reasons for that. One, it would be great to have the original vintage bracelet, preferably the Jubilee if it came with that originally. Second, of course, the original bevels of the case, they're not here, but you can see plenty of metal remains. The red line for me on an older Rolex is the pin bars protruding from the perforations, and that is not in evidence here, a long ways away from that. And finally, the dial itself, which featured a gloss base originally, features a little bit of patina on its surface. Now, of course, many of the first generation gloss base white gold index Rolex dials of the 1980s wound up with something called crazing, which was essentially a 
a spider crack hairline fracture that would overtake the entire dial and sometimes lead to disintegration. This watch does not have that. There's a little bit of, I would almost say, modeling to it in that the gloss base has turned a little bit in a patina fashion that's a bit irregular but quite subtle and especially compared to the crazing, I believe quite beautiful and attractive. The hands as well as the indices remain untarnished. Inside, Rolex Caliber 3085. Again, the first dual time GMT Master Caliber. And it was a little bit thicker than what came after, meaning that the case profile had a bit of a neo bubble back profile to it, hence the nickname of the watch, the Fat Lady. Politically incorrect in the extreme today, it's also relatively subtle. You may suspect the watch to be quite plump on the wrist. In fact, it's only about half a millimeter versus the successor reference 16710. But this is a collectible, and again, one to wear. A handsome watch with a new spec bracelet. This is a all-time great First is a flag that flies forever. You can have more expensive. You can have auction records set and reset. You can make a watch bigger, more complicated. But you can never go back and make a watch first if it isn't already. And this is the first of the GMT Master 2s. Automatic winding with a 42 to 45 hour power reserve, hacking seconds, dual time, COSC chronometer, and I'll mention it has the later dial. The first one said Oyster Perpetual. The eventual dial was Oyster Perpetual Date, which you see here. This is an interesting opportunity to get into transitional era Rolex before prices go absolutely nuts. Now, in time, this watch will be collectible and an investment grade watch. As of today, as I show it to you, I consider it a daily driver. See it and take it for a test drive on our website.